Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY. On today's episode, we're gonna be replacing the drum brake front wheel bearings on this Moke here. Um, we've done disc brake bearings in the past and now it's time to do some drum brakes. So, stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by you. That's right, every single episode created on Classic Mini DIY is made with the help of our patrons and our long-term part sponsor, 7 Mini Parts. If you want to see more mini stuff and more videos in the future, please consider supporting the channel on patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY or by checking out some of my awesome merch like t-shirts, stickers, and all sorts of other really cool stuff at merch.classicminidiy.com. All right, let's get back to the episode. Now, like I said, on today's episode, we're gonna be replacing the wheel bearings on the front drums on this Moke here. Now, these wheel bearings went bad while we were at CMU last year, and they were starting to get a little grindy. We really drove the snot out of this when we were at uh, CMU up in the mountains here. And so it's time to get the bearing replaced so that the smoke can get out on the road again and we can start moking around and having a good time. So. Let's jump over to the front of the car and we'll start by taking off the wheel and taking a look at the drum brake assembly and see how that looks different from say a disc assembly. So diagnosing a wheel bearing situation like this is sometimes a little confusing. Maybe you don't know when you need to replace your bearings. Now in this case, the way that we presented and the way that we found that these bearings needed to be replaced is that in short drives, it was okay. So if you drove down to the store real quick and then popped back, it wasn't too bad. You didn't have any sort of weird loud noises. But if you drove the car for any extended period of time, what started to happen is you would hear kind of a whirring noise or a chirping noise. And uh, it got louder and louder the more and more it was driven because as it got hotter and hotter, it started to present more of those issues. Now, that's not to say that your car and your Moke or your Mini might not present in a different way. Um, you know, when wheel bearings go bad, sometimes they go bad and they are totally constant, solid, like grinding, chirping noise all the time. And then sometimes they, uh, they just don't make any noise until they don't work anymore. So um, first thing we gotta do is get this drum off here. And that's these two screws right here. And then once the drum comes off, you guys will have a better look at the whole hub assembly, which will also need to be removed in order to install the wheel bearings here. Now we're looking at the difference here between a disc bearing and a drum bearing, as well as a tapered roller bearing and a ball bearing. So these are obviously the little balls in your ball bearing. And this is the outer race of that bearing. It looks in rough shape. Um, so it's really good that we're replacing this right now. In fact, in fact, you can actually feel a ridge down inside that bearing in there, which I'll show you guys. We'll clean it up and have a look at it. But this outer portion comes off first and then we actually have to take off the rest of the hub assembly here to get the races and the bearing off of the backside. This part right here actually extends into the rear bearing and helps hold that in place on these uh, old drum braking systems. So next up, we'll be taking off this and uh, that does involve disconnecting the brake line so that it comes off properly. Now that we have the steering assembly disconnected and the top and bottom knuckles loose, the next thing that we're gonna do is jump over here and disconnect this brake line. Now, keep in mind that when you disconnect the brake line, brake fluid is going to go everywhere and that will take paint off of stuff. So you are gonna wanna try and catch that um, either on the floor. We have a piece of cardboard down, but we're also gonna use a small drip pan if we can find one. 
And then on top of that, we are gonna try and pinch or cap off the line here so it drips as little fluid as possible. So you can see here, we put a small little plastic cap on here to help assist with the fluid dripping and preventing that. It still is dripping a bit, but it definitely slows it down. Now we've got old dust shields. We've got an old washer here for the brake line. We won't want to lose that. And then we've got the actual hub assembly here. So you can see on this side, the two drums with the uh, wheel cylinders, wheel bearings are inside here. And then the back side is nice and grody with uh, all that grease on the back side. So we're gonna need to get all this out, but first we're gonna clean it up so it's a little bit easier to work with. All right, so on the bench here, we've got this drum assembly, and what we're gonna be doing now is taking the springs out so we can take these shoes off before we prep and clean this and make it look a lot nicer. Um, so what you have to do is pull out the two springs on these wheel cylinders here, and then these two springs that hold the shoes together. Now. On the rears, it is a little bit easier to you know, mix these up and maybe put them on the wrong way. It is a little bit harder to do on the fronts because of this hole here, it all kind of matches up the way it needs to go in. But pro tip, take the shoes off and kind of keep the springs and the shoes and everything in the same orientation as you take them off and it'll help you reassemble it afterwards. Now, while you're doing these kinds of jobs, it's always a really great opportunity to get into some of the parts that are harder to clean. Now, this outer CV joint is a great example of that piece. This was covered in grease when we took this off. So we're taking this opportunity to use the brake cleaner, get all this stuff cleaned up real nicely. And you can also check on this outer CV boot. They have a tendency to tear. They have a tendency to fatigue and tear down the sides. So if that's bad and that is, you know, has a cut in it, something like that, You'll probably notice it has flung grease around the areas, but it also will allow dust to get into your CV and damage it. So it's really important if this is out like this to take the opportunity and also replace that. Now, one other piece we need to clean is this lovely outer hub. So we'll take the ball bearings out here over at the bench, take that off, and then we can, uh, then we can have a better look at this. All right, so we've got this kind of degreased here to make it a little bit easier to work with, a little bit less gross. And the first thing that we need to do is get the old bearings out of here. So that involves a nice handy punch here. And we are going to just hammer the old bearing right out of here. There we go. Old one is out and this is a and with these old ball bearings, you'll probably find that the balls are gonna go everywhere too. Don't worry too much about that. So to get the dust shield off of the back, the easiest way to do this is to take your punch, put it on the groove of the old bearing race, which is on the outer edge here. And that's the bearing race on the back side of this hub. And you're gonna to wanna to just hammer this out and it's gonna push that dust shield out with it too. All right, so there's our old bearing race that can be discarded and our old seal as well, also trash. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that while I did just say you can throw these away, it is good to keep one of these so that you can hammer in the new bearings. Um, you can use this as kind of like a uh, surface to actually hit with the hammer so that you don't damage the new bearings when they go in. So boop, boop. All right, so now with both of those bearing races out, we were, the next step was to move on to this outer piece of the hub here um, and remove the race on this. However, let's take a look closer look at this here real quick. This is not something that we're gonna be able to reuse, unfortunately. Now you see this surface right here? This is supposed to be smooth machined steel and you can see it's got an actual texture to it. Now, when we were at our event and we had this wheel bearing failure, we started to have some issues. To make sure that we could get the moke home, what we did was pinched it up a little bit and added a little bit more torque as a temporary fix to get us home. But as a result, most likely what happened is this ate away and because this right here has so much play in it. Check, it. check this out here. So we've got our new bearing here. And if we put this on, one, we shouldn't be able to just slide that on like this, but you see that play right there? Definitely too much play. And what that means is that this is not usable. 
So we don't have to go to the trouble of getting this outer race off, which is nice, but it does mean we need a new one of these. Now as a comparison, you can see this is also a secondhand hub that Justin had laying around, but this is much, much smoother. That is just kind of like a visual ridge. There's actually no, can't really feel a ridge at all on there. There is still the old bearing race on here, so we will still have to remove one of those, unfortunately. But um, once that's off, this should accept the new bearing a lot better. Yeah, that's tight right on the top there. So cool, let's take this off. All right, so we've got that race off and you'll also notice that we had to take off a small spacer here. It's tapered on one side and that goes on towards the outer portion of the hub. And this would normally go on here. You're gonna to wanna to reuse that spacer. And then this outer race goes in. But before we do all that, we're gonna use a little bit of sandpaper and smooth this up. Just make sure that there's no burrs or anything on here that are gonna cause us any sort of heartburn. Now we're looking down the barrel of the hub here and um, on the older versions of these ball bearings, they actually had a separate spacer in them. So you'd have your race like this and then you'll have a separate spacer which looks something like this. It's just a circular piece of metal and that would go in between the two bearings themselves so you can't sandwich it down too far. Now the new bearings actually have the spacer built into them. So you can see on one side, the uh, inner race is sticking out a little bit more. Now the spacer side of these new bearings both need to face inwards. So on this side that we're on the back side of the hub here, the spacer needs to go down in and then on the opposite side, the spacer needs to face inwards. So they'd be touching each other um, as you tighten this down. Now installing these is basically the reverse, but we do need to pack these with grease first and then hammer this down in here, hammering on the outer race using preferably an old race to hammer that in and then do the opposite side. And then we should be able to install the outer hub back into both of these at the same time um, and then sandwich it all up, tighten it up on the car. All right, so I went ahead and hammered the other side of the bearing race in place here um, just to get that out of the way. Now, the next thing that we need to install are the dust shields and they're pretty simple. They go in with the tapered side facing down inwards. So this inside seam here, that needs to be facing inside the hub itself. So just like this. So now with that one in, got to do the same thing on the other side, but there's an additional piece that we have to install on the back side here. So it gets a dust shield and then it also gets a, a little plastic ring. It looks just like this. And that goes on the outside of the dust ring. So opening just like on the other one goes in like this. And we'll set this plastic piece over here so we don't mess that up. And we'll hammer this in and then just set the plastic piece in place. All right, so now that we have all of those new bearings put in, the next thing and the final thing is to reinstall the hub assembly onto the outer CV here, and then put the outer drive flange into that. And the inner flange should go in both of the bearings here, slide in, and then you can tighten this down to torque spec. Now, one thing, we do need to put the brake line back on, spin that tight with the whole assembly, we're gonna spin it back on here. And then after we do that, we'll then be able to slide the hub on here, put it in the knuckles and tighten everything down.
All right, folks, so that is gonna wrap up the process of replacing a drum brake wheel bearing on a Classic Mini Moke or a Classic Mini. If you guys have any questions about what we did in this episode, feel free to post those in the comment section below. Otherwise, until the next time I see you guys, enjoy those minis and motor on.